This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Profit. Hello and welcome to the special interview with Paul Hamlin, Group CEO, Capgemini, one of the early players to tap the India outsourcing story. Paul, thank you so much for talking to us. Have things changed globally in terms of the macro environment and are we out of the woods yet? What I would say is uh, first, two, two remarks. The first one, because of the recession, a lot of IT investment had been delayed. So there is appetite. Our customers are eager to spend, if I can say that. They are, they are really, they are, they, we don't miss ideas of investment. The question is, will there be the confidence to spend? And we saw last fall that because not, notably of the euro turmoils, fear can come back rather rapidly. You know, people started in November to delay again some contract signature. So what we learn is it's a volatile market. It's a volatile economy. These last weeks, I think the confidence is back. I think uh, today our customers are ready to embark on some new modernization, some new plans. So feeling the confidence is back there. Okay. What about the geopolitical tension in the Middle East? Has that impacted business sentiment? Also, you have the sovereign debt crisis, which is not much but in Europe itself. Are those the major challenges in terms of impacting business sentiment or other macro challenges? Tunisia is sensitive for the French people, but it's a relatively small economy. Egypt will be something bigger, notably uh, because it's very close to Israel and people will fear that the regional destabilization can mean eruption of uh, bombing conflict. So that, that, that might be important. At this stage, I would distinguish. The first point is what's going on in Middle East and what you said about sovereign debt. Uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, oh, people already try to read what happens in Davos at the World Economy Forum. My take out of Davos was emerging market countries saying to the developed country, could you fix your debt issue? Because this is today the main danger that can plague or, or threaten the growth. So uh, I think this is an issue. This is, will weigh on the demand. Uh, still, I would say the latest news about the US economy are, are quite OK. And in Europe, we see some patches of good growth like Germany, uh, possibly uh, Scandinavia. And, and so I'm, at this moment, I repeat, volatile, but I'm more on the optimistic side. Okay. Also, you've said in the past that India plays a strategic role for Capgemini itself. Uh, can you elaborate on this in the current environment? Is this more strategic now in this environment? Uh, three things. The first one is customer want effectiveness and industrialization. And uh, in India, uh, thanks to the size, the abundance of skills, we could pioneer uh, following, I don't think we copied, but we could follow the, the big Indian player. It is probably the, the, the place in the world of IT where the most uh, disruptive effort of innovation and industrialization take place. That's, sure. that's very solid. The second point is about truly innovation and breakthrough. And I would say a lot of the innovation will be here. The challenge to all of us here in India, and I'm a French one, I would say is why is it that a lot of these innovation are marketed through the Silicon Valley and California? Sure. And my third point would be in the group. What we have done well is launch new offering based on Indian innovation. And, and we start now in the group Capgemini to use India not as a, a volume production center, but as the place that we leverage to launch new offering, what we in our jargon we call top line initiatives. We launched five of them last year 
and very successful, and all of them were backed by innovation center, competence center here in India. Okay. Also another part to the India story is that you recently elevated a lot of senior management from India to key global positions. Is that the future for Cap Gemini in terms of most Indian management taking on senior roles, senior global roles for Cap Gemini? I would say, uh, I would follow you but on one word. I, I wouldn't say most because if you most then you will completely discourage the talented American or Swedish people or French people. Now as I say, the group today uh, has 110,000 people and more than 30,000 Indians. So it's pretty normal that I would say 30% uh, of the senior role positions should be held by Indians. But that's, that's the normal proportion. And if in India there is the core of our innovation, there will be a higher proportion. So today uh, um, I have asked the head of India that, had, that ran a production center to drive 30% of the group, 2.7 billion euros, so it's a big business, uh, uh, in control of all the market where offshore and India rule the customer behavior and, and the way they buy. So Salil Parekh runs the US, UK, and all the financial sector. Uh, in continental Europe, where offshoring is less pervasive, uh, it's a French still, but he has a number two Baru Rao to introduce some Indian taste and, and grow that. And of course, I needed to replace Salil as the head of India because 30,000 people, and I innovated or not, but uh, we appointed a lady. So Aruna Jayanti now runs India, which is our biggest workforce. So will that increase the role of Indian management in the global operations? I think today it does, but I think we will see more. Uh, we have created an infrastructure-centric uh, big operation, and there uh, we recruited someone in India to run the Indian share of it, and his, grow, his, his role will grow too. So it's, it's, it's just the start. The question, I mean, your, your kind of nationalistic question is, can we see rivals? Uh, uh, I would say, frankly, don't underestimate the Americans. They are extremely talented in technology and innovation. I don't see the Chinese uh, uh, rivals coming up soon in an international world. We will see China grow. And which other pool can we leverage? There are very few that have the size and the, the breadth of India, frankly. At this stage, I don't see any. Sure. Also, uh, another nationalist question uh, is in terms of the ramping up of headcount. You're one of the largest European MNCs who've invested in the India outsourcing story. Take us through your plans in ramping up your headcount in India going forward. The, the first point is, if you look at the overall group, uh, uh, we will... Uh, we grow now in the second half, but uh, uh, a few points. But I would say that modest growth is a growth in the group. There is, it's a, a, a story of uh, two different sides of the group. Our Indian operation will have grown more than 30% last year. 30% that puts us, I would say, in the top three in India. I, I, I would think so. It's 30,000, so we are a dwarf compared to some uh, Indian giants, but if we grow faster, one day we'll catch up, and I, I, I think we will. So uh, where would that lead us? I, I already told that I really see when India will be half of the group in terms of headcounts. Um, the, the question that we have to crack is uh, the, the question I touched before. Um, Today, 110,000. Uh, we were 90,000 uh, uh, in January, so we have grown 20, mainly in India, as I said. Uh, I see competitors with 180,000, 200,000, so we'll get there. Is the game to go to 500,000? I'm not sure. And I'm not sure it's, that should be our objective. Sure. So the question will be, how can we disconnect a little bit our revenue growth from piling up people, which is a play on solution and platforms and cloud? So you're at 30,000 at the end of 2010? Yes. 
at the end of 2011, what are the numbers that we're looking at? The budgeted growth that we will expect to beat will be between 20 and 30 percent, so that will put us in uh, 30, between 35 and 38,000. I don't think we'll cross 40 at the end of this year. We'll cross 40,000 in 2012.